Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host ADHD and Attention Coach Jeff Copper and we're here today with uh, Melissa Orlov, Marriage Consultant. Uh, Melissa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Melissa, I'm, I've been fascinated about this, uh, this topic today, ADHD divorce rates. Um, there's some research out there that uh, it's kind of interesting, I think, when you take a look at it, um, divorce rates of those with AD, or couples with ADHD, both in the short term and long term. Can you tell us about it? Well, so the divorce rate research overall is mixed, actually. Um, but when you look at it more closely, what you see is that the studies that were done with younger participants uh, show uh, st standard stuff, you know, it's the same divorce rate as everybody else, uh, essentially. And then as participants get older, uh, then the divorce rates go up, and there are some studies that suggest that it's almost twice as likely that somebody with ADHD will be divorced in their later years as somebody without ADHD. Um, so, so it definitely is a matter of sort of time, which makes sense because they're repetitive behaviors mm -hmm. that couples get into. Now, is that, is that in total age or is that in longevity of marriage? Um, I don't know the answer to that, actually, to be honest with you. So they're just doing, I suspect it's both. Okay. Uh, it is older participants in the studies um, that are the ones that show the higher divorce rates as well as higher rates of maladjustment, as they call it, um, in the relationship where the relationships are really struggling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm kind of curious on your thoughts. Um, the hypothesis is if they're younger and older, is, can we talk about the dynamics of that a little bit? I know what I've observed coaching, and this, isn't, this is just the world according to Jeff, is that many times relationships kind of come together and there's that romance phase and it, it kind of lasts you know, for five, six years, but when kids kind of come into the mix, logistics and the need to get organization, organized and stuff becomes more intense, and I see more strain in relationships when that's added. Uh, can you comment on your thoughts on that? That's absolutely true, actually. So it's interesting that the, there's a great attraction, I think, initially between uh, what some people call mixed couples, ADD, non-ADD, because there's a mm -hmm. lot of energy and sort of wonderful things that the ADHD adds to the non-ADHD person's life and then a more organized approach to life typically that the non-ADD person adds to the ADD person's life and so there's a lot of really good stuff going on um, but the logistics of marriage can be difficult and at first non-ADD partners tend to compensate particularly female non-ADHD partners tend to compensate for organizational issues but when kids arrive uh, there's so much need for uh, organization, it really puts the organizational yep. stuff on steroids, essentially, and then stress really starts to hit the couple, typically. Yep. It's funny because uh, for the individuals that I've coached and or couples, when it kind of comes in and they're in the, the thick of that mix, it's always fun. I always ask them, so what exactly is it that, that your partner was attracted you to you for? And it's an interesting question because most of them don't really respond to that, but it's been interesting to me how many times it gets back to characteristics of the ADD, like I was in the moment, adventuresome, and we, you know, I was like the cruise director type of a thing. And I, I'm just sharing that because I know it's fun in, a, in, a, in, a, in coaching people to ask them and take them back to the roots because in a weird sense I've seen sometimes where it's almost like the ADD is what attracted and the ADD is what's kind of creating some of the problems just because of the logistics uh, down the yeah. road. Well, there are all sorts of different qualities for ADHD. So spontaneity yep. and high energy and, and uh, being able to action oriented, all those kinds of things. And, uh, and then there are other qualities that are harder to live with long term, like uh, difficulty organizing mm -hmm. and, and doing the chores and things, which and there are certain stages of your life mm -hmm. where those things are just more yep. important. Yep. So when you're dating, the spontaneity and the energy is what's yep. most important. And when you have very small children, the organizational yep. stuff takes a more of a front yep. line role and, and yep. that becomes problematic for many couples. Well, I know one of the things about this video, and if you're listening to this, you're, you're likely in a relationship and you're kind of curious about it. But, you know, one of the things I, I want to bring out is I think there's hope because I know, uh, Melissa, you do a lot of work um, in some seminars and stuff working with uh, ADHD couples that are struggling and uh, through your work I think there is hope because you know from what I've learned from you there's uh, there's lots of things you can do to kind of get that relationship on track you want to just speak to that for just a second well there are and, and thank you for mentioning my seminar because that is one of the ways that a lot of couples get their relationship back on track um, it's very in-depth and it gives them a lot of different ideas which I wouldn't have time to go into uh -huh. here but um, but it, but you know when it comes down to the the organizational stuff, uh, treating the AD, optimizing treatment for the ADHD, getting a good coach mm -hmm. um, frequently is very useful. 
Um, and so there are a lot of things where ADD is highly manageable. In fact, once you start to address it, and once you get it under control, learn how to work around ADHD symptoms, um, the relationships turn around and are quite good. I mean, it's really, uh, it's really remarkable, the change. So I always tell people, even if you're feeling really hopeless at the moment, uh, once you learn about all these uh, ideas mm -hmm. and, and ways to interact, that uh, things can dr change dramatically in the future. Yep, I think that's a key, get an education, learn about it. So, Melissa, I want to thank you very much for uh, coming on the show. It's been great. Thank you. Take care, everybody.